Welcome to this session. In this session, we will be talking about language, the various types of language and the classification of language. So to start with, let's understand what is the concept of language. So language basically is any channel that helps you transmit ideas. So it's a means of transmission of your ideas. Language can be broadly uh, grouped into what we call as language families. These language families include all the minor subtypes that are within the language. So for example, we also call language family as a group of family which, is, which has its origin into a single family. For example, uh, I'm using English as a language. Now English can be used in various accents. You have American English, you have British English, Okay. These are all the branches of the main language family, but this main language family is what is known as the proto-language. So you have the proto-language or the main language from where all the concepts of language originates. And this proto-language is basically a reconstructed form of an ancestral language, which is later on classified into further smaller languages. Now we, when we talk about language, there are few important terms we must know about. Before, uh, after studying those terms, we will come on to the major languages and the classification for language. The first term here is hierarchical diffusion. What does the word hierarchical diffusion mean? Hierarchical diffusion means the language diffuses as you move down into the society. For example, you have kings. You have the middleman and the slave. Let me take one of the most conventional uh, classifications. So as you move down into the society, the language diffuses. The most refined language would be used by kings and the kingsmen. The middleman would use a kind of mixed language. And then slaves would have a lot of speech variants. And these speech variants are also known as dialects. So a language can have various regional dialects. Language, on the other hand, can act as a source of unification, where it unites ideas. And it can also act as a means of separator. It creates boundaries. OK, this is the section which is English speaking. And this is the section which is, I can say, speaking Mandarin. So it creates barriers, or it acts as separator in one way. And it acts as unifier, because all the people who are speaking either Mandarin or English would be united under a common platform. So language acts both as a unification factor and a separating force. Now there are some other important terms in language. The next is Pitgin, or we call as Siroli. What is Pitgin? A lot of countries use uh, mix of language. Okay, so areas you have two or more languages mixed into a language. So that is what is known as Pitkin. A classic example of Pitkin is, uh, I can say, Swahili in Africa. So Swahili is a language that is made up of two languages, that is Bantu and Arabic. So it's a kind of mix of Bantu and Arabic is Swahili. Then uh, similar examples of Pitgins are Africanis. Then you have Hatai Sirioli. And you have Bazar Malay. So these are some of the languages of Pitgin, uh, which, which basically have origin from two or more languages. So they are known as the mixed language. The other important concept that we must know in the concept of language is lingua franca. What does the word lingua franca mean? Suppose in the country, for example, India, you have numerous languages. So what basically technically happens is the there is a common language that is adopted by the nation. And that common language represents the nation. So I cannot say that, uh, OK, this is a country, India. Government has constitutionally approved 18 languages. 
So all 18 that becomes the common language is no. The language which is most popular among most of the people becomes a common language. For example, in India, it's Hindi. In China, the lingua franca is Mandarin. There are a lot of other languages which are used, but Mandarin becomes a common language. And similarly, in Africa, it's Swahili. So these are the lingua franca of the region. Now we have talked about lingua franca, we have talked about Pitkin. The next important concept is extinct language. What is extinct language? The languages which are no more in use becomes the extinct languages. East of Peru in South America, you had had more than 500 languages that were popular, of which only 57 languages remain now. So what happened to the other languages? The other languages vanished off or became extinct. This is one of the important concepts in language. Some of the languages that became extinct, it became important for them to revive. So revival of language took place. So revival of languages, the two main languages which were recently revived were Hebrew and Celtic. So these are the two main languages that are revived. Some of the languages have adopted or changed from the existing language. For example, you have a language called Gothic that has now moved on to Latin. So all the Gothic speakers now speak Latin. So you, we talked about extinct language, we talked about revival of language. There is another important concept that is known as isolated language. Isolated language is a kind of language which is spoken only by a section of people which are basically isolated from the remaining section, the remaining society. So the common language here is Basque. It is spoken in Pyrenees mountain. And uh, then another language is the Icelandic. So these are the kind of isolated languages which are spoken around. The next important concept that we need to know before we understand languages, isogloss. What is isogloss? Isogloss is basically boundaries uh, which separate. So basically there are two important isogloss boundaries if we talk about east of United States of America. So these two important isogloss creates three regions. That is the northern region, you have the midland region, and then you have the southern region. So this is what is isogloss. <clears throat> now, Let's know about the six major languages of the world. So the six major languages, the first and the most important is the Mandarin, that's Chinese, spoken by 12.65% uh, of the total population. You have Spanish, 4.93%. Then you have English, 4.91%. You have Arabic, that's around 3.31%. Then you have Hindi in India, that's around 2.73%. And finally, Bengali from the state of Bengal and uh, the regions of Bangladesh, you have 2.71%. So these six are the most popular and the most spoken languages of the world. Now, as we globalize, what happens? English is now spoken in China and Spain. Uh, then you have in Arab countries, then you have in India, and then you have in the Southeast Asia too. So what happens, globalization, what it does, it threatens the local languages and most of the people start to pick up the globalized language. So for example, we can say English is a kind of globalized language, so most students start to pick up with English. Now a classic example to understand is the, to understand this is Indonesia. In Indonesia, what happened is most of the people speak native languages, but their children go to school now. So what they do, they have slowly and gradually adopted to the globalization process and they do not know their native language. So the native language is totally gone for this generation and all they know is the language that is taught in the schools. So it can be English, it can be Urdu or any other prominent language that is popular in the country. So this is how globalization affects the uh, language of a region. 
Now, when we talk about the issues of language, there are few major things. Now, as I said, English became a globalized language. Why? So we should be able to answer some of the questions. Why English is distributed across the globe? So the distribution of English language is not only attributed to the current process of globalization, but it has its root long back into the process of colonization. So wherever across the world um, British colonies established, English became a language there. We can say uh, there is a popular saying for British colonies that Britishers never had their sunset in any. That means that across the globe they had colonies, and if in one colony it becomes night, the other colony that would be there of Britain across the globe where it would be day. So around the world you have British colonies, and wherever British colonies established, English became a dominant language. So this is how English speakers distributed across the globe. But there was a section from Britain which migrated to America. When this section migrated from Britain to America, what happened was there was a brief kind of differences between the kind of people who remained in Britain and who migrated to America. So this difference gave rise to two different uh, divisions of language in English. One was the American English and the other was the British English. Now what's the basic difference between American, American English and British English? There are few major parameters on which they differ. First is the spelling, then is the vocabulary, then you have the accent. So all of this differs as we compare British English with American English. In British English, I would like color, I would write color as C O L O U R, but in American English it would become C O L O R. So that's the difference in terms of spelling. Then you have difference in terms of vocabulary. That's and finally the accent or the pronunciation. Pronunciation, if I can say. Uh, I do uh, my route to go from uh, place A to place B is a direct route. So that is what is I am using a British accent. But in American accent, I'll say the same thing. The route from A to B is this. So route becomes route. Schedule becomes schedule. So that is how. British American language, British English and American English have differences in terms of spelling, vocabulary, pronunciation and accent. So <clears throat> what is important to understand here is this difference is attributed to few reasons. Reasons First is the people who migrated from Britain just wanted to have a separate identity. Then the people who migrated to America, America had an exposure to the Native Americans and they picked up uh, some of the words and accents from the Native Americans. So it's basically more of mingling up rather than maintaining an individual identity in order to establish what was the American accent and the British accent. Now let's move on to the most important concept of today's class, that's classification of languages. This is indeed a very, very big topic and a very complicated topic for most of the students. Now let's understand. We'll start with the classification. The first is the Indo-European sect or the Indo-European group of population. This accounts for more than 50% of the speakers. The next language is Sino-Tibetan, common in the region of Tibet and China. Speakers around 20%. The next is Afro-Asiatic, common in the regions of Africa and Asia, speakers around 5% of the total population. This is also known, uh, previously it was known as semantic hermetic. Uh, that includes Hebrew, that's the language of Jews in Israel, and Arabic. The next section is known as Austronesian, around 2% of the language speakers belong to Austronesian. 
This is common in Southeast Asia. This was China and regions of Tibet. So main language is Mandarin. This is common in Southeast Asia. Also, uh, the most popular language is Malay, Polynesian. Besides Malay Polynesian, the other common language here is Malay Indonesian. The next set is the Niger Congo. It also accounts for 2% of the language speakers. This has six branches. The largest of the six branches, this is very important, Benue Congo. Uh, which has basically Swahili dominated because of the Arabic influence. The next important is Nilo, Sahara. Then you have Khosian, which is common in the southwest region. And finally you have the Dravidian language that again accounts for 2% of the total languages. Now when we talk about uh, Sino-Tibetan, there are a few important things to understand. Chinese and Japanese are the two languages which are similar to one another because they ha both have two systems of uh, phonetic symbols. So it's basically more of a kind of pictorial language rather than based on sounds. Another sin uh, Sino-Tibetan language is Korean. Korean is assumed to follow the Hankul system. And this Hankul system says that each letter in the Korean language represents a sound. So you have sound besides each letter. Then other branches of Sino-Tibetan includes two major divisions. So in Sino-Tibetan you have two major divisions. First is the Altic and the Uralic. So Altic is the region between Turkey to Mongolia. So you have kind of Turkish, Uzbek and Yugir. While uh, another language which is from the Indo-European side is Uralic. It is popular in the regions of Estonia, Finland and Hungary. So let's understand the most popular site in detail. That's the Indo-European. Now, to understand Indo-European, I would be making two common classifications. The first and the foremost popular classification is you have Indo-Iranian. Then you have Roman. Germanic and you have Balto Salvic. The other four which are not that popular in Indo-European languages are Albanian, Armenian, common in the region of Turkey, then you have Greek and Celtic. So these are the four less common and these are the four most popular. Now let's understand these four most popular languages first. So balto salvic in the region of Baltic Sea, you have three major types. You have East balto salvic you have West balto salvic and South balto salvic The East balto salvic the common languages are Russian, Ukrainian, and Belarusian. The West Balto Salvik, you have Polish from Poland, you have Czech from Czechoslovakia, and then you have again Slovak. In the South region, you have the Serbo Croatian and Bulgarian languages. So, this is the classification for Balto Salvik. Now, we'll move on to Germanic. So, now Germanic is very important to understand. So Germanic along with English forms the West Germanic. This West Germanic has two divisions, the language of highlands and the language in the, that's the Low Germanic and the High Germanic. Low Germanic is predominantly English and High Germanic is on the south mountain of Germany popular language in the south mountain of Germany. Then besides the West Germanic, you have another section which is known as North Germanic. This North Germanic is the language of Scandinavia. 
So the major countries included here are Sweden, then you have uh, the Danish or the Denmark from Denmark, Norwegian from Norway, you have Icelandic. So these are all known as the Old Norse, Old Norse languages. Now we'll move on to the next common language, that's the Romance. It includes four divisions. The first is what is known as Spanish. So that's most, most popular kind of languages. You have Spanish, then you have French, you have Italian and Portuguese. Some of the languages you have definitely heard of. So these four common languages are known as Romance or Romish, Catalan or Romanian. These are the kind of language into this group. And finally, we'll talk about the Indo-Iranian group. So Indo-Iranian, it's very important to understand. We can classify into two divisions, East and West. Let's talk about the East first. East is the Indic group. It's basically the regions of Indian subcontinent. So in India, you have Hindi as the predominant language. In Pakistan, you have Urdu as a predominant language. Now let's talk about the West. The West is the Iranian sect. So you have the Indic and the Iranian, so West and East. So the Iranian sect includes three basic classifications. You have Persian, Pathan, and Kurdish. So you have Persian, Pathan, and Kurdish. So let's understand Persian first. Persian is the language in the Iran region, region of Iran. Then you have Pathan language in Afghanistan predominantly. And Kurdish is the language basically in West Iran. Then you have East Iraq. And uh, Eastern sections of Turkey. So these are the common languages and the classification of Indo-European language. Indo-European language is the most important language group to understand. So we have talked about the classification of language. The only thing that remains here is how English language diffuse. So the English language diffuse into two language sects. The first was known as Frangialis, that is combination of French and English. And the next was known as Spanglish, that is combination of Spanish and English. So for example, shorts or short pants in English became scores in Spanglish. And then you have vacuum cleaner in English, which becomes vacuum cleaner. So this is kind of mixing up of some of the languages. So in this section, we have talked about language. The types of language, the major prominent languages of the world, and the basic classifications of the language. Hope you enjoyed the session. In the next session, we would be talking about the concept of religion and ethnicity. Stay tuned for further lectures. Have a good day.